lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson. Our Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us of our trespasses, give us our trespasses, in Jesus' name, amen. Bring it! My life's back on track, I'm feeling good, matter of fact, the Holy Spirit got him jumping, I don't know how to act. A sanctified Christian on a mission, God bless it, watch yeah. the music, got him dancing two step and church and session. In the name of Jesus, we give God the glory. glory. The book of Ephesians, Paul tells the story. I Jews in the Gentiles sharing God's promise. Uh. Peace in the Middle East, today it's is soon coming. coming. I pray for more peace in the streets where peace. we live. I pray for the day I live to see my grandkids. Yeah. I pray for the day they stop the violence in the hood. Let from the, the West to the East, let me tell you what's good. The church was off the chain when we prayed in God's name. What? God's Holy Spirit protect your way all the pain. So much persecution, same oh. suffer oh. retribution. Oh. I pray for my people not to prison oh. institutions. Every day I pray. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. His power is the truth. the truth. I pray for those of you who don't know how to read or write. Right. I pray for those of you who still don't know Jesus Christ. Right. We live and we learn experience the best teacher. Put the church first, oh, listen right. close to the preacher. Oh. The word of God will teach you how to live and prosper. Stay away from foolishness, evil slick posters. Lawyers and executives up to no good. no good. I pray for God's will like the Bible says I should. Right. On the right path, the apostle preaching gospel. God's Holy Spirit. Every day I pray, our Heavenly Father, 
Who are in heaven Hallow be thy name That will be done On earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread Forgive us of our trespasses As we forgive those that trespass Every day I pray Okay Every day we pray We need to pray Every day I like that song That's a good one Kimmy Welcome to the show. Hey, how y'all doing? Everybody doing good? It's going to be a good show. It's always a good show because God gives us a good show. It's not me. I'm just a vessel. And it's like a lot of other people, just a vessel, bringing you the words of the Lord as he gives them to me right that second. Like, I don't rehearse this stuff. This is really live. It truly is live, and it truly is amazing um, what God can give you just like that. You know, it's like, it's amazing. So it's called, today is called Connection. That's our topic, Connection. But before we get to that, let me thank uh, Kimmy, my producer, the awesome lady who keeps the show going all the time. And Jerry Royce on Positive Power, 21.org, live and worldwide. And we are live and worldwide, and we welcome you to the show today. And Easter is just around the corner, so we should be thinking about Jesus even more than normal now. And people should go out. And get my new book Because it's not my book It's Jesus' book He wrote it He Talking about himself Talking about how he feels about us He's Being funny He's being Intelligent He's being, All the things he is He's being wise And he's being loving and caring And explaining a lot of things to us about himself, you know, like get a glimpse of him in the whole book. It should be all red letters, but it doesn't need to be red letters because it's all me quoting what he's telling me to say. It's called Jesus I Am, and you need to get it. You need to get this book, I'm telling you. It's going to be the most amazing book that you've ever read since the Bible. And yeah, I know it's a big claim, but it's got to be because Jesus wrote it. So how can it not be? You know, I just hope I did it justice as he gave it to me. And um, I'm sure it'll be all right. <laughs> because the Holy Spirit always guides what you're writing when you're writing what the Lord has given you. And this is, that's the way it works with me. And I'm sure that's the way it works with a lot of other people. So go get that. Barnes & Noble has it. In Not in the bookstore, but if you go in the bookstore, you can go to the counter and you can order it. And it's on their website. And that's where you get it from, Barnes & Noble. It's called Jesus, I Am, by me, Larry Corkins, God's writer. And it will amaze you, seriously. Because it's it's an awesome book. And it's really it's part of our connection to Jesus. You will be more connected to him after you read this book. He talks about how he's not he you know he's he's not the stuffy old God that you think he is that people want to paint him to be. He's not yeah, he's old as the beginning of the time because he was here at the beginning of time, as we know it. And but he's cool, you know, God is cool. He's a cool guy. And he understands us because he's part of us. Jesus, you know, he's the great I am. And the book is actually, it's 33,777 words on purpose. Because that's what he told me, that I had to make it that many words. Because the 33,000 represents his age when they took his life. He gave it up. Can't nobody take his life without him giving it up. Because he's 
he's God, you know, what's he, what's he going to do? And the 777, that's, that's his number, 777. So that's why it's 33,777 words. It's an amazing book. You need to get it. And once you get it and you read it, you'll love it. If you don't love it, take it back to the store. But I promise you, you won't be doing that. You'll be showing your friends, and they'll be getting one. And it'll just keep going on and going on and going on. But I don't want to spend the whole show talking about the amazing book, but you do need to get it. Jesus, I am. And let, I want to start off by praying. Like the song said, every day we pray, we should pray every day. So let's pray. Father, there's so much going on in the world today, Lord, and we talk about this all the time. And, and you know, I talk to you all the time about it, and other people do. I'm sure Kimmy does. I know she does. And we sitting here watching our children pass away in front of our eyes. They can't even go to school safely, Lord. And we had some crazy person running around sending packages, blowing people up, and ended by blowing himself up. But we just pray that you keep an eye out and a hand over all of us that are listening to the show and connected with people listening to the show. And really, everybody connected to us, Lord, all of us. And we pray that you help those who truly need help more than others, and we put them first, Lord. We we know if we don't need as much help, then I pray that you help the others who the others who do need more help before us. And we pray that you give us a great show today. Give me the words to say, Lord, because you only know, only you know what to say. I don't know what to say until you give it to me. And we pray that everybody leaves here satisfied with the words of the Lord. And we pray for grace and mercy on all of our souls. We protect our families and keep us all safe from the craziness of this last day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And shout out to Margaret. I hope you're feeling better. I know you listen to the show all the time. And I'm thinking about you and praying for you, girl. Okay. Well, connection. That's the that's the topic today is connection. You know, really the topic every day is Jesus. And how are we gonna stay connected to Jesus. So today's Topic is connection And I don't even know what I'm going to say The next second until he gives it to me So I'm just going to go with it And then we're going to say it And then that's what's going to happen And I just want you to know This is live This really is live Because we don't We don't rehearse this Kimmy can tell you that We But she's behind the booth So you can't hear her But Right We don't rehearse Any of this you know, like preachers, they they get a sermon from the Lord and then they write it out and then they a lot of times they keep it, they recycle it, bring it back next year. You like, I think I heard that before because you did. But it's an awesome speech, you know, it's an awesome sermon. But the thing is, when they're really in the spirit, they never finish their. It's hard for them to finish what they wrote. Because the spirit will lead you to wherever he wants you to go, you know. So, but I don't rehearse anything. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about until usually the night before, sometimes the morning of the show. I didn't know what I was going to talk about today until a few hours ago. So, and that's how it works, you know. And I don't think about, I don't worry about what am I going to say. Because I know he's going to guide me, right? 
he's going to guide me to talk about what he wants to say. And then I come out here and just start rambling like I'm doing now. No. But connection. You know, we really are all connected. We went around. There's so many people in this world that are hateful, and and they hate other people for whatever reason. They just make up reasons to themselves why they should hate somebody, and and that's how they feel. And then they get connected to certain people who hate other people too, and they form hate groups and things like that. But some people are hap- seems like they're happy making other people miserable. I don't know what that's about, but I don't think they're really happy. It's just how they are for some reason. I don't understand. I really don't understand that, but they need the Lord in their life. Obviously, they don't have Jesus in their life, or they say they do, and they go to church, and they're they're still treating people like that. So I think they're really disconnected there. They're not. They're missing out on something. So where's the connection to Jesus there? Okay. So but but God told us we may not always understand things in heaven and on earth. So I think that's one of those things we don't understand and we'll never understand why people act the way they do sometimes, or some for some people it's all the time. You know, why do they purposely be mean to you? Why are they trying to get you in trouble? Why are they looking down on you or hating you for no reason? And, you know, I was checking out the uh, the Internet a couple of days ago, and I was looking up this one guy who's in the neo-Nazis and and the stupid things he was saying. It's like, it was totally ridiculous. You know, it's like, he said he's not a white supremacist. I'm not even going to say his name because I don't want to give him that glorification, you know. The only name I want to say is Jesus because Jesus is the only one that should be glorified. He's the only one that should be up on a pedestal. He's the only one that should be in first place in our lives. And he's the only one that really matters to begin with. And then after him, everybody else matters. But hate people, people that hate, haters never see that other people matter. Get it. They don't understand it. But one day they will. When they're standing in front of the Lord and they got to answer for how they behaved, how they acted, how they treated people. But it's too late then. It's too late. And they they want to use the cross, the Klan, you know, they KKK, they want to use the cross and burn it. What how can you try to pretend that you're a Christian and you love the Lord but you hate other people? How is that? You know, Jesus said it himself. How can you say you love my father who you've never seen when you hate each other, you hate your brother who you've seen daily? How can you do that? But they do. They do. And this idiot I was listening to, I'm sorry, he is an idiot. Just because we're Christians, we're not supposed to say somebody's an idiot. I've seen so-called Christians cussing people out for no reason. So I'm like, okay, are they? They don't seem like a real Christian to me. But what kind of connection do they have to the Lord? Because I don't understand it. When you're walking around treating people so bad, we're supposed to love each other. All of us. All of us are supposed to love each other. And I don't want to hear about how you're not a white supremacist. You're a white nationalist. Whatever you're saying, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. You're just hating on people for no reason. Because they look different than you. 
if we were all the same color, we'd still look different from each other. Somebody's nose would be bigger, somebody's ears would be droopier, one eye is bigger than the other, you know, I don't know. Anything that there is that makes you look different from somebody else, that's what they're going to hate on you for. If you look better, if you look worse, or whatever. But why do we do that? Why why do we have to do that? You know, do we not understand that we are connected? We're all connected. Because we're, if we go back further, if we go back far enough, as like in the Bible, we see, and we are in the Bible. See, people get confused. They think, oh, the Bible days. We're in the Bible days. We are in the Bible days right now. We've never been out of the Bible days. We're in the last day. We're in the Revelation. We're in the book of Revelation. That's where we are. Now, we know that. Why can't other people understand that? We are in the book of Revelation. Of course, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you don't believe in the Bible, and you don't know that you're standing in the last day. And everything that's going on is already written about, and it was all already written about over 2,000 years ago, and it's happening now. And we're going through it. We are in the last day, and we were in the last day then, so you know we're still in the last day now. And we're going to be in the last day until the last day. How more plain can I say it? <laughs> When Jesus comes back, you'll know. Oh, time's up. Everybody out of the pool. And until that happens, we need to learn the ways of the Lord. You know, he's given us a lot of time. He really is. He's giving us a lot of time to get right, to get where he can take us to heaven with him. He's giving us all this time to get ourselves together And we're wasting it We are wasting time We're not feeling the connection But if we go further back in history And and the Bible really is a history book And it's a Connection with God And it's a A book telling us How we should live our lives And it's a, a book telling us What's right and what's wrong And it's a book telling us what our future is going to be And That doesn't mean we're destined To go Into the future blindly we're, He's trying to warn us ahead of time These things are going to happen Doesn't mean they have to happen in your life We want to avoid those things That's why we read the Bible So we can get right And, and go into the future Connected to each other In a way that's never been done before But if we go further back, I keep saying this, if we go back far enough in the Bible, we'll see we're all related. We are all brothers and sisters. Not just in Christ. We're just brothers and sisters, period. Because, or we be, will we be cousins? And I don't know, but we started out, Adam and Eve gave birth. To children And those children gave birth to children And here we are You know And it doesn't matter God made more people After that And then they married Adam and Eve's sons Or daughter If they had a You know we don't How many people did Adam and Eve have They could have had A lot of people we really don't know, need to go past Seth. Who's Seth? A lot of people don't even know who Seth is. Seth is the one. He's the third child. The third child. Y'all thought he was just Adam and Eve having Cain and Abel, and that was it. Cain slew Abel, and then Abel was gone out of the picture, and then Cain. But Cain was sent away and, and started the Canaanites. And evil people, and 
And then God said, don't get with those people because they're evil. It had nothing to do with color. But racist people want to say, see, God told people not to mix. So he's saying that uh, black people and white people shouldn't get together and have babies. That's what they say. They That's what they're saying. It's crazy because when, when a black person and a white person get together and have a child or any two different races, which let's go, we are all one race, human race, but according to people, we say, but when two different Races get together. They have beautiful children. And I know because I have beautiful children. And my children, they are half black and half white. And I was talking to somebody yesterday who just didn't get it. And this, okay, let me tell this story. So, this is a young black lady. And I'm working with her. And she started talking about mixed children, which I have. Mixed, biracial, multiracial, whatever you want to say. I don't want to hear what the racist people have to say. And she said, and she's making an argument that a mixed person, a biracial person, is more black than white because black is dominant. And when you mix colors, like, say, in a crane or a paint, she was talking about when you put black paint and white paint together, I said, when you do that, you make gray. What are you talking about? It doesn't come out white and it doesn't come out black. And... She was saying, yeah, but one is more dominant than the other, and black is always more dominant. And I'm thinking, you know, and I'm listening to her, and I'm a young girl, you know, and I'm trying to explain to her, I said, you can't deny what you are. If you're half black and you're half white and you only claim one side of yourself, then you're denying the other parent. Where's the connection there? You know, it's okay to hurt one of your parents' feelings by saying you don't exist in my life. Oh, you exist at home, but when I talk to other people, I'm just this color. I said, no, you know, black people accept, and and I hate to say that, accept, like it's up to them to be okay with you. Black people are quicker to say this person belongs to us than white people are because white people even if they're not Klansmen and they're not neo Nazis there's a lot of prejudice that goes with not every white person I'm not talking about all white people. I'm just saying there the people that are racist in this country and you know that it exists and it goes on and it is true, you know, like we're not supposed to talk about it. Why not? We need to talk about everything nowadays because the end is coming. And if we're going to get right, then we need to discuss everything that's going on. We need, there's nothing to hide. I mean, they discuss it. I mean, if the racist white supremacists want to wipe the, the, everybody off the face of the earth except for themselves. I mean, if they could, that's what they would do. But it's a real problem. It's a real issue. And only Jesus can solve problems like this. You know, we can't solve them. We try to, we just got to get through life, do the best we can, trying not to hurt somebody. Because they will make you that feel that way, you know, when they march down the street and stuff. There's no connection that we're feeling right then. But, I'm trying to explain to this young lady, you know, it, no matter what you say, how people look when they come out, you know, what's, you know, what's one more dominant than 
the other, that makes you black. And I'm like, as she kept talking, she sounded that she's a black lady. And she was starting to sound like a white supremacist. And I'm like, girl, you know, you sound like these racist people. And she didn't get it. You know, she kept going on with what she was saying. And she kept trying to say it over and over, you know, and I'm like, as many times as you say it, it doesn't help the situation. People are people, no matter what. You know, just because some people want to recognize you and other people don't, does not change who you are or what you are. We're children of God. Jesus is all colors. I'm going to tell you right now. You know, the age-old question, like, what color is Jesus? White people want to claim he's white. Black people want to claim he's black. Hispanic people want to claim he's Hispanic. And he's all of those things. He's every color there is together. And how do I know? Okay, it's like, how do you know when nobody else knows? Because everybody should know. He already told us. And I know because he told me. And he had me write it in his book. The new book, Jesus I Am, does talk about his color. He does talk about his color. But he downplays it. He doesn't, it doesn't matter to him what color we are. Because we're all his. He made all of us. He's connected to all of us. And we're all connected to him, whether we realize it or not. We're all brothers and sisters And we don't even have to say in Christ because we are in Christ and we all are brothers and sisters walking around earth and we're hurting each other because we hate each other, some of us, because why? Because we're different colors and we think our God is is our color and nobody else's. It says in the Bible, the Bible, okay, because when I write stuff, I'm writing what God's telling me right now. This is what Jesus says right now. Then I write it down and I give it to the world and, it's, and they either accept it or they don't. But if they prayed on it, then they would know it really is Jesus saying these things. I don't know why some people think that he stopped talking to us. They think there's no connection there anymore. They think he stopped dealing with us like he doesn't want to have a connection with us anymore. He doesn't want to be around us anymore like He just cast us aside. And I don't understand why they think that way. Because is that why? Because it's easier to live your life of sin, thinking that Jesus don't really exist. He just, we say he exists, but then we treat him like he don't. We say he's there for us, but we act like he's not. We want him to be in our lives, but we don't. We don't want him interfering with what we're doing every day because we're about to do something that the flesh likes, but it's not good for us as as far as getting to heaven and knowing all amazing peace and love that heaven has for us that we don't feel down here. What is our connection when we try to purposely disconnect ourselves from the Lord. He said he's, you know, the vine, we're, we're branches on the vine and we, we're fruit and we, most, you know, we grow and we become very sweet and good to the taste and smell and the touch and we look good. We look good to Jesus. Even if we don't look good to each other, we look good to Jesus, but we look good when we're doing good, we look good when we're feeling the love for each other. We look good when we're being more like, more like Jesus, and we stay connected that way. There's a connection between us and the Lord, and it says in the Bible that His feet are the color of bronze, and it also says burnt copper same color as bronze and and it discusses it 
in the Bible says he has hair of wool. You ever seen a white person with hair of wool? We've seen black people with hair of wool. And we can see mixed people with hair of wool, but we've never seen an all-white person with hair of wool. Where is that? Where do you do that at? You know, and, and it said he has eyes of fire. Eyes of fire because he can look right through you and and burn you into your soul, the love that he has for you, and grace and mercy. And if you're, you know, against him and he's coming down in the rapture and then he comes back afterwards and he's seven years later and he's coming to get the Antichrist and he's coming to get all his followers, then you're going to feel something completely different. From those eyes of fire and says he has feet of bronze. Where do people skip this part? How come they don't see this part? They oh there's no description of Jesus in the Bible. That's what they tell us. And it is, but it's just enough to make you take it by faith and not by what it says, because he doesn't come right out and say, I'm mixed. I'm every color there is together, and that's why I make everybody different colors, and I take all the colors, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm all of those, because I'm connected to everybody. He doesn't say all that. He leaves it up to our interpretation. Our, but you cannot interpret bronze. Is That's the color, bronze. His feet ain't dirty. You know, he was washing people's feet. People were washing his feet. They're not dirty. That's the color. They didn't get sun tan. They don't say uh, in the summertime his feet are bronze because of the sun. And in the wintertime, they're all white. It doesn't say that because it's not true. Because bronze is his color. And even in Ezekiel, I believe it's Ezekiel, talks about Jesus in the Old Testament. Yeah, in the Old Testament, before he was even born as a man, they talked about him. The cherubim, that's God. And the color was the same. Bronze or burnt copper. And that is his color. That is his color. It tells it in the Bible. But if you ask anybody who's racist, they'll say it does not describe Jesus in the Bible. Nowhere does it describe Jesus in the Bible. But we know, we know that he's white. They know he's white so much, they'll burn a cross in your yard. Now, I would like to know where the logic in this is. They claim, let's go with the Klan, the KKK. We all know what they are except for Donald Trump. He don't know. He's never heard of them. He doesn't know anything about their hate group, and and he's he may be a charter member. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. That's not Jesus talking. That's me talking. Okay? Jesus knows for real what, what's going on. He knows everything. But I'm just speaking for me right there. But the thing is, they claim to be Christians, and then they try to use the Bible to say that they should be slaves. They were slaves because man made slaves. And it, no, when they're talking about that stuff in the Old Testament, they are not talking about people going to Africa, a bunch of black people, bringing them to the United States and making slaves out of them. You know, it's not talking about that. Because the white people that were here didn't want to work. I don't understand. But it wasn't all of them. The people in the north were cool. They went to work. People in the south, sorry, and I'm not trying to offend people in the South, but at that time, it was different. You know, I'm not saying it's 
all the way different now. There are still racist people everywhere all over the country, and we have to deal with it. But we can't let that control our lives. We need to let Jesus control our lives. Our bigger connection is with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and he made us all. And that is hard to love people who hate you. It really is. It's really hard, and I can't say that I really love all these people that hate me. I can't, you know, I have to be honest how I try, but it's kind of hard. This is what we have to try to do as Christians, you at least tolerate them and move on. I'm not trying to hurt nobody, you know. We, we, we're civilized people. We're people made by God. All people are made by God. And we have to try to get along because we are connected to each other, even so slightly, but we are. And my point to the other thing was, how can they say they they're Christians, but they hate other people. And then they want to take the symbol for Jesus, which is the cross, and burn it. Seems to me like that would be something the devil would want to do. And going by their actions and the way they think and how they speak about other people who are not like them makes me realize that the devil does work in their lives and the devil is leading them because he is the father of hate and Jesus said that in the Bible. Yeah, he said that in the Bible. You know, I'm not quoting the Bible word for word and and the Bible was interpreted from the original Bible and you know, Jesus might have said it one way and they wrote it down another way, but it had the same meaning. It had the same meaning. And we're talking about the same thing. We got to stop hating each other. We need to start loving each other. And we can't worry about somebody's past. You know, they... There are people who hated people in their past, and then they changed and started loving people. You know, there are people who hated other people because of their race. And they changed, and they started caring about everybody because they somehow they had, a, they had an epiphany. You know, they had a revelation and I don't care what they had, but as long as they stopped hating people and they started loving people, because it's never too late to change until it's too late. It's never, as long as you're above ground and you're walking around, it's never too late to change your attitude towards people and how you treat people and how you feel about people. And it's never too late to come to Jesus and accept him as your personal savior and your father and your brother and your maker and all things that are good and get that connection that you need because we, you know, we live our lives if we live 50, 60, 80, 100 years old, 120 or if we leave, live for one day, if we live for one day, we're going to go back to heaven. But if we live 100 years, 100, we'll even say 120. If we live to be 120 years old, stubborn, and we want to do things on our own, we don't want God telling us nothing. We're not thinking very intelligently. We're going to be, we're going to die, and then we're going to live again 
for eternity. That's forever. That's always like hundreds of millions of billions of trillions of whatever years. It's just going to keep going on and on. It's never going to stop because God's not going to die at some point. He's going to be here forever. And we spend in 120 years, maybe, most of us are not, on this earth. That's pretty much the max somewhere, you know, it's like, and we spend that bit of time as nothing. It's like not even a dot in time. You won't even see it if you're looking for it. It's not even a, you know, and we, we're we more concerned about that time than we are for the rest of forever. The rest of forever. Think about it. Do you want to spend the rest of forever in hell with your skin burning from acid? Sulfur water, it says. We don't, you know, people still pay, uh, go down there as a big fire and you jump in it, and we it doesn't say that in the Bible. People just took it that way because sulfur, which is acid, burns your skin, and you burn forever. Because you're in the lake of, it says lake of fire. It says lake of sulfur. And people interpret it as a, as a lake of fire because fire is not, you know, acid is liquid. You can swim around in it. And I don't advise it, but you could swim around in it, and all your skin is burning, but your skin is still there. So it's just continuously burning. If you burn up in a fire like a furnace, you can't swim around in it. And once it gets done burning you, you're gone. Your flesh just burns off. So you can't burn for eternity like that. But that's the way our minds work. And that's the way we grew up being told that it was. I saw a movie like that. Once I did when I was 12 years old, I saw you ever see a movie like that. I saw a movie like that. They made it. This is hell. This is where you're gonna go if you're bad. You know, and you went there and it was like fire everywhere and just walked through hell. And there's the devil. Look over there. He's red. He got horns and pitchfork and tail. That's him. Making the grass there. There he is. That's not what the devil looks like. That's not what the devil looks like. He might seem like that to us. It's easier to picture him like that, but he really does not look like that. He's actually very beautiful. And maybe more beautiful than Jesus. You know, why? And why do they, they paint Jesus as having this long blonde hair? And these blue eyes and actually people have died and gone to heaven and come back and and they told what they saw and who they saw and they told how Jesus looked and they saw Jesus and he had green the greenest eyes you've never seen before in your life, just amazing and doesn't look like those pictures the people painted of him being white with long flowing blonde hair does you know that's not right to begin with because the Bible says he has hair of wool, so how is this right? These pictures are not right. He doesn't look like this. He doesn't look like that. I look kinda of like that, but he don't look like that at all. And does it matter what Jesus looks like? It matters what he is like. He is love. He is kindness. He is caring. He is wise and he is all knowing. He is everything we should be striving to be. Where is our connection? We just need to have that connection and, and try to be more like Christ. Jesus is amazing. He's amazing. He is awesome. And he thinks all the time 
out of the box. You know, he's not confined. You can't confine God into a little space. He's everywhere because he made everything, and he's all over. And one everywhere at the same time. That's what he is. Staying connected to everyone. Even those people who don't believe in him, he's still watching out for them. Hoping one day, have an epiphany, and they'll finally get it, that Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the one who made all this possible to be able to leave here one day and go to heaven where all things are wonderful, all things are good, all things are amazing. I've never been there with, okay, that's not true. We've all been there. We were made there. And then we were sent here. We didn't like it. We weren't too happy about it. We cried a lot when we got here. Couldn't speak. We might have said something we didn't want to say to somebody with regret. We couldn't talk yet. We didn't know what was going on. We look at these parents we have and we're like, oh, Lord, why are these? Because we judge by sight and not by our heart like we should. But we're only human. We're only human. We need to we don't need to be so critical of ourselves. You know, we really don't. And we need to stop being so critical of other people. We're going to make mistakes. And the biggest part and the hardest part of being a child of God is forgiving people and forgiving yourself. Forgiveness is a big, big deal. Believe me, forgiveness is what we, that's like the biggest thing, forgiveness you know, you can't get into heaven without forgiveness because God has to forgive us for all we've done and all we've said and all the things we blame him for and how we cussed him out and all those other things. And I will never understand why people keep blaming God for everything. You know, like you get mad and they say, God, you know what? And it bothers me. I don't know if it bothers you, but every time I hear that, it really bothers me. And I don't say a lot to people when they do it because what I can't change you by trying to condemn you, you know. If I'm going to attempt to help God change you, I have to do it with kindness and love and caring, not with condemnation and criticism because we can criticize each other all day, but we can criticize ourselves just as much. That's not the answer. It's overlooking things. We have to overlook a lot of things, forgive a lot of people who do a lot of things to make us mad, to hurt us, to come against us on a daily basis. And... Because we are in connection with the Lord and connection with each other, we need to find that in us to stay connected to everyone and forgive people. Forgive. It sounds so simple, but it's really hard based on what they did. I can never forgive you for what you did. People say it all the time. And then they turn around and eventually they forgive them for what they did. Some people don't. And and if you don't and you had a hate and animosity in your heart and then you die, you know, where does that leave you when you're standing in front of Jesus full of hate? They don't want haters in heaven. There are no haters walking around heaven. All the haters are in hell. And there are good people in hell too. Yes. There are good people. There are people like, oh, I think if I just be a good person. And they were, in their own eyes, good people. And they are now in hell 
because they weren't good people in God's eyes. You know, you can be good in your own eyes, but still other people look at you like you're not good. You're not nice. You you hurt people. You're hateful, spiteful, and you're backstabber, and you're whatever. And you make people not want to be around you. Where's your connection there? You know, we don't really have a connection with the devil. We really don't because he's not related to us. We're not related to Satan. Satan was an angel, an archangel, a very important archangel. He led the choir. He walked around in finest of clothes and jewelry and probably wore the best cologne. And, you know, we don't know what all goes on in heaven, but he was the man to the angels, but, or at least a third of them, but not enough. To overthrow the God. Nope, couldn't do it. Tried, but it did not work. Fell short. I don't even know who's leading the choir now, but he thought he was all that and a bag of chips. I don't know if they were eating chips in heaven at that time, but he thought he was the man. You know, he was like, I'm gonna get. Uh, you know, so, but we're not connected to him at all. There's no connection there. He didn't make us. He's not part of us. He has nothing to do with us except to try to get us to fool us into following him instead of Jesus because he hates Jesus. He hates Jesus so bad because Jesus is in heaven and he's not. Jesus is our God and he's not Jesus is all wonderful and he's not but there's no connection with the devil so why do we keep doing things the devil wants us to do we need to find that connection in ourselves to stay with Jesus and follow what he wants and follow what he says for us to do and not just go off on our own. You can't survive on your own. You can't make it on your own. You need Jesus in your life. And times are worse now than they've ever been. Times are worse now than we've ever seen before in our history of being alive, in our history as a nation. And Regardless of people who want to hate us, who want to hate anybody, we don't have to worry about those people. Just leave, you know, I'm not even going to bother with them. Pray for them, but why bother with them? They're not controlling our lives. Jesus is in control. And we need to be connected to that, to him who is the leader and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We need to follow the one who created and made everything. That's where our connection is, not with hate. Anything from hate is not good. We don't need it. We don't need it. And it's a hard time now in the last day, and the Bible told us it would be, Jesus told John and John told us and we know that it's not an easy time because we're living in it. Our children are not even safe going to school. The devil is attacking our children and I must say this. This is a sign. Jesus is coming back real soon. Now, when I say real soon, I don't mean like in the next 10 seconds he's going to be here. Because if we, if that were the case, Kimmy wouldn't be sitting over there right now looking at me and keeping us on the show, on the air. Because she would be gone in the rapture. 
and I hope I would too, and all of you would be, and just be one big empty room, and the airways would just be dead, you know. Some airways would keep going, but some would be dead. They would just be silent. But, I mean, we don't know when Jesus is going to come back, but we're really close. And it's kind of obvious because of all the things that the Bible says will happen in the last day have happened. Except for one, which Donald Trump is trying to usher in, that, that Jerusalem goes back to Israel. That's really like the last thing we're waiting on. And I don't know if it's really happening right now, but I believe it's the beginning of the, the end for us in that way because I believe it's Donald Trump said that Jerusalem belongs to Israel and recognizing it as their capital. So they're over there fighting over it right now. Because so Israel said, good, we, we have America on our side. We're going to go in and we're going to take it. Because right now it's kind of split between the both, the Israelis and the Palestinians. But when it is for sure... Back in Israel, where it belongs, and not with the Palestinians, where it doesn't belong, and it doesn't matter what you say about it, it doesn't matter what I say about it, God said Jerusalem will be theirs. And when Jesus comes down after he takes out the Antichrist, and locks up the devil for a thousand years, he's going to create a what? New Jerusalem. And sit where? On a throne in the New Jerusalem on earth with the people who did not make the rapture, but they didn't take the three sixes that the Antichrist will give you after the rapture in order to get food. These people if they survive, because he will be going around cutting people's heads off who don't comply to his demands. And if you make it, you didn't make it in the rapture, but you survived all this, Jesus will not kill you. Jesus will put you in New Jerusalem with himself. And if you don't know anything about what's supposed to happen, then you might be confused right now. But go back and read the Bible and figure it out. If you can't figure it out, find somebody who can figure it out for you, help you with it. But the Holy Spirit will guide you. Just ask him. You know, the Revelation is kind of confusing because John wrote it that way because he didn't want it destroyed and they would, he wanted to get rid of it. So he call things, other things to throw people off. They're like, this this looks like some madman wrote it, you know. But we have people who can interpret it better because God gave them that ability to do that. And you know, once that happens then any time after that, Jesus is coming back to get his people. And we need to stay in that connection with him so we can be those people. Because if you go into rapture, you don't have to go through the Antichrist. You don't have to go through the seven years of Antichrist. You know, the first three and a half years might seem wonderful, like, oh, that's Jesus. That's not Jesus. But if you know it's not Jesus, he's coming to get you. Because he knows who you are. Oh, yeah, don't make no mistake. The devil knows who you are. He knows what you came for. The devil knows who I am. He knows who Kenny is. He knows who you are and you and all of you over here. He knows who everybody is. And he knows what you came here to do. He knew. He knows that Kenny's here to do awesome work for the Lord. 
He knows I'm here to write books for the Lord and to speak about it, and he knows these things. He's very intelligent. You know, we say stupid devil. The devil ain't stupid. We're stupid. Compared to the devil, we don't even come close to how intelligent the devil is. And he uses that against us because he knows how to trick us. And he's been doing this for a long time, so it's not new to him. You know, and he'll bring things to you that you love your flesh loves, and he'll present them to you so you'll sin, and he'll keep you in that sin. And then he might leave you alone for a while, then he'll bring you back again. And you might be able to resist him at first, and then next time you can't. Because we're only human. If we're tricked by the devil, it's understandable. Because he's smarter than us. He's an archangel who's fallen, who's not fallen, actually he was thrown down to Earth like a lightning bolt That's what Jesus said He saw the whole thing He witnessed it He didn't do it He witnessed it Michael, another archangel Is actually the one who went to war Against Lucifer And One third, well He was already outnumbered Two to one God was already destined to win And Michael threw Lucifer out of heaven and Jesus said, I saw the whole thing. I witnessed it. Dude, you were thrown out of heaven like a lightning bolt. Hit the earth. Boom. How do you like them apples? He liked the apples so much, he went and gave one to Eve. Okay. I'm trying to be funny, but we don't even know if that's the real fruit that he gave her. But he's been doing this for a long time. Time he has no connection with us He don't care anything to get back At God that's what he's doing And he knows the Best way to get back at God is to get Us So he goes after us and right now He's attacking our children and that's Another sign people that's Another sign that we're in the last day Because he is Attacking our children so much We're scared to send them to school We're scared to send them out of the house We can't do you know, your kids can't go out and play anymore. You may never see them again. And and I, as I go around town and city where I live, and I go around and I see little kids out by themselves going somewhere, and I just keep thinking, what is wrong with these parents just letting their kids go out? Don't they know people are stealing kids off the street? Oh, yeah, people are stealing kids. They're, like, putting them in, they're selling them in slavery. Yes, it's still going on in the black market. They're selling kids. They're selling women. They're selling girls. They're selling sex. They're selling people to devil worshipers who are killing kids and offering their blood up to Satan. Yes, we have those nuts, too. And then some people can't have a child, so they steal your child, some of them right out of the hospital. And then, you know, that's the devil work all over. And he's got his name written all over this stuff, you know. And then other people are grabbing them and keeping them in their basement for years until somebody discovers them or they somehow break free like they did in Ohio and other places, you know, this is not an isolated incident. It's going on a lot of places. A lot of people are crazy, and they've lost their connection with Jesus, and they're trying to connect themselves with Satan. Even if they don't know it's Satan that they're connecting with, it really is, he's very tricky, very tricky. We need to keep the connection with Jesus. We're in our right minds. We know what we're doing. We're not hurting people. And But let's not trick ourselves. Let's not be like some people who think, oh, I'm a good person. I'm a good Christian because I don't, I'm not grabbing people off the street and I'm not killing people and I'm not. No, but you're doing things that are just as bad in God's eyes. Maybe not our eyes, but in God's eyes. 
because you're not you're not about love. You're not about peace and harmony. You're not about brotherhood and sisterhood. You're not about the Lord's business. And that is the Lord's business. It's simple love. When they asked Jesus, did you come to change the commandments? He said, no. Oh, no. I didn't come to change those. The ones, those laws, those commands that my father gave to Moses all those years ago, they're still good. They're always going to be good. They're always going to, they're never going to change. But that don't mean we need to condemn each other because most people are committing a few of those all the time. Lying is the biggest one. People lie all over the place. Lie like a rug. They don't say it's okay to tell a little white lie. It's okay to lie and say, oh, no, I didn't get anything for your birthday. It tricks somebody. It's still a lie. Now, see, here's where it gets tricky to some people. They don't understand. Jesus knows why you're lying. He understands that you're doing it out of the kindness of your heart because you're trying to surprise somebody in a good way. You're using a lie in a good way, but it doesn't matter to God. It's still a lie. Even though Jesus understands why you're doing it, he still can't condone you doing it without asking him for forgiveness. Actually, you have to ask his father in his name and mean it in your heart. You can't just say the words. you got to really mean it, you know. And he'll forgive you because God is all about forgiveness. He's all about forgiveness. He's love and forgiveness. They go hand in hand. They go together. They're connected. That's a connection right there. And we need to feel that connection and share that connection with other people. We need to love people and we need to forgive people. People who are going to do things that are outrageous against you. It can be hard to forgive people for those things, but we have to do it. We have to do it. Do we want to be more like Jesus? Yeah, we do. So if we do, then we have to forgive people. We have to. Otherwise, we're going to be standing in front of him and trying to convince him that we're worthy to get into heaven because, well, we can't even think of what to say. And that's how it's going to be. You're going to, if you, just, you can't trick God. You, can, you can't fool God. You can't stand in front of him and come up with some Blame excuse why you acted the way you did, why you lived your life the way you did. It's it's all right there, and he'll probably maybe he'll play a video for you of how you acted, how you treated people, and it'll play on the cloud right there, and you'll see it, and you won't be able to you you won't be able to deny it. But Jesus said it is true. He don't lie. He's never going to lie. He's never going to sin. He's never going to do anything that's not what he would do, what God does. And, you know, if you were God, you can make your own rules. And then everybody would have to live by those. But you can't be God. There's only one God. He's a trinity, but he's still one God. And you, you're not going to stand in front of Jesus and say, oh, you, you, look, Jesus, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to your father. You can't do it. You're not going to be able to do that. And I wouldn't advise you to talk to him like that anyways. But you're not going to be able to do that. Because like you told Philip in the Bible, when Philip said he wanted to see, he couldn't wait to see God face to face. And Jesus said, oh, Philip, 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 man, you still don't get it. You look at me every single day, every day, and you want to see God, but you're looking at me every day. He told us right then that he was God. Simple. And he said, do you claim to be the son of God? And he was like, yeah, that's me. 
That's who I am. Jesus, I am. Which leads us back to the new book, Jesus, I Am, which is really, you have to get this book, I'm telling you. If you don't get any other book in your lifetime besides the Bible, you need to get this book because you will feel the connection with Jesus in this book. And and it's not because I wrote it, but because he gave it to the world to get a glimpse of him that nobody's really seen before. People don't understand. He, you know, he thinks out of the box, and and that's one of the chapters, too. And he doesn't do things how we think we would do things and how we think he should do things and we God, go get them. And he's like, no, 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 that's not the way to approach this. He's got his own ways of doing things, and we don't understand them, but they work in our favor. So if they work in our favor, we have a connection, then why are we criticizing? We can't criticize God. He's God. He's perfect. He makes whatever he does, whatever he does, if you're connected to God, Whatever he does is going to be in your favor. Or it may not look good now, but down the road you'll be glad it happened because it worked in your favor. See, God sees the whole picture. He sees the beginning to the end. He knows everything. He knows the big things that are going to happen to you in your life, and they're going to happen. It's your destiny for them to happen. It's the little small things that we do, the little stupid things we do that kind of says back here or there or whatever that we worry about the most, that we create ourselves. We create them ourselves. But the big things that we were sent here to do, our destiny, those are going to happen no matter what. And even in spite of us, they're still going to happen. They really are. Now, what we do with them, that gift that God gave us, or gift that God gives us, we are accountable for everything we do. So no matter what we do with them is up to us. But we're still going to be that. I mean, even though we don't like it or why it happened, well, some of, some people like it, but if we don't like who got in the White House, it was going to be, it was destined to happen. Okay? We don't know the reason. We don't know why it had to happen, but we know that things are going to keep getting worse. So why are we so surprised? Why are we so surprised when things happen, when we know things are going to get worse? But that doesn't mean they're worse than your life or my life. This means as a whole, as a world, things are worse. They're worse than they've ever been. And and it don't mean yet yeah, there's rumors of wars and there's wars and we're still in wars and we don't think of it anymore as being you know, we don't think about the wars we're in because it's been going on for so long. But if we have a major war where somebody actually attacks us and you know, we have a World War Three out of it then we'll definitely be thinking about it. But when we have these other little, we consider little wars, I don't think any war is little, because when people are dying, that's a big deal. But we've come so far that we are kind of oblivious to what's going on because we're so used to bad things happening around us which is all the more reason why we need to stay in connection with Jesus. And we need to be close to him. And if we understand him better, it's like if we read this book, I'm telling you, take my word for it. If you get this book and you read it, you will be amazed. And you'll probably get a few laughs out of it. And you'll feel better about yourself. And you'll feel better about Jesus. He's not... He's not a stuffy old guy that's just sitting up there barking orders. He's not sitting there waiting at the church for you to show up every Sunday. 
He's with you all the time. He sent his comforter to be with you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. So God is always with you. He sees everything you do. He hears everything you say. He reads everything in your heart. He talks to your heart and he communicates to you through your heart. And then your heart speaks to your head. You know, this sounds crazy to some people. They just want to know it has to be something tangible. I got to see it. I got to feel it. But see, that's where God comes in. He's a God of faith. We can't see him. We don't, how do we know he exists? Because we look at the things that happen in our lives and we see the amazing miracles that still happen on earth. Like when a little boy is lost in, in the Boy Scouts and he's in the wilderness and he can't, we can't find him and we're looking for a week and he comes walking out on the road right where the re- people are that are looking for him. A week later and he's six years old and they say, wait, hey, here he is. What happened? And they then they give credit to Luck. And Andrew Luck didn't have nothing to do with this. Okay, that's a joke. Luck don't have nothing to do with it. It's a blessing. God did it. But we have become desensitized because of the devil running around doing his work. Getting in our heads, saying, oh, it wasn't God that did it. It was just plain luck. I don't believe in luck. I don't believe in luck anymore. I say if you're gonna, you're either going to be blessed or you're not going to be blessed. And make no mistake, the devil can bless you too. But his his blessings are not real. They're not everlasting. They don't cause anything good to happen. He's just tricking you. Because whatever he gives you now, he's going to take away later. But what God gives is forever. And always in it. And then we blow it. You know, it's up to us. It's all up to us. You want to stay connected to God? It's up to you. If you want to learn more about the Lord, get the book. I'm going to tell you again. It's up to you. Or don't get it. If you don't care to read anything new about Jesus or from Jesus, or you don't want to read the new red letters, and they don't need to be read because the whole book is quoting him. So we don't have to distinguish between him and somebody else because the whole book is him. And that's how he had me write it. And he said, you don't need to be in red letters because you know it's me talking to you. So if you're going to, do, if you're going to get any book, this year or next year, do it now. At a time of Easter coming up, when you're thinking about Jesus the most and you want to be connected to him the most, then read what he has to say to us now. You might have somebody say, I know, I just know you are not giving us new words from God, new words from Jesus. And I said, lady, yes, I am. I'm, I'm sorry, but that's what I'm doing. He's giving them now. It's not, I'm not going back and looking in the Bible and re, rewriting what it says there. I'm telling you right now what he's telling us right now. And that's what he sent me here to do, and that's what I do. And that's what I do because we need that connection with Jesus. And through these books is how we get connection Through prayer is how we get connection. Loving other people is how we get connection. Forgiving other people is how we get connection. Stay connected. Stay tuned in to Jesus. Get Jesus I Am at Barnes & Noble's website. Do it now while you're thinking about it. Because the show's over, and I'm about to head out of here. And... Kimmy's going to have an amazing day because she's blessed like that. Because we, you know, we, we're just ordinary people, but then we're not. We're extraordinary people. And just like you, you're ordinary people, but you're extraordinary people. You know why you're extraordinary? Because you have Jesus. 
And Jesus is no ordinary God. He's the original God. He's big OG. You know, he's extraordinary. And he loves us. And he's got a sense of humor. You know, where do we think we get these things from? God has a great sense of humor. God has music. He he is so full of everything good that we are, everything that we do that's wonderful and that's good. It's all him. It comes from him. That's our connection with, with him. It's, it's a good connection. So stay prayed up and, and keep that connection. And and again, yes, I say I want to get the book, Jesus, I Am. I'm sounding like I'm beating a dead horse here, but I wouldn't do that because it's kind of sad to see a dead horse or anything dead. But we know that when we die, we can live again forever with Jesus. If we stay connected God bless you Let's pray real quick Father bless us I want to say congregation I guess it is Are we preaching today? We're teaching today We're teaching every day Because we love you Lord And we spread your message with All the world All the world right now It's live and worldwide And we're spreading it and we we want to share love, and let's just touch each other if we can, hold hands, and spread the love all over the world. So that's what we need now. The world's going to keep getting worse, Lord, but we pray that you make our lives better for all your followers and keep us in close proximity to you always, as we know you do. We know you do. We we love you and we thank you, Lord, for another day. And every day is a blessing. And we ask you to help those who cannot get around as good as they used to. Margaret and a lot of other people. And we ask you to fill our souls with love and kindness and forgiveness. And that's really what we know that you're all about. And we pray that, I pray people get your words, get your, you know, if they don't have a Bible, go get one, read it, understand it, let the Holy Spirit guide them through, through it, and, and people who pray, I pray, and can be praised, and we all pray, stay connected to you, and I pray, go get your new book, Jesus I Am, it's your book, Lord, it's not mine, it just has my name on it, but it's your book, you wrote it. And I think it's an awesome book. And I pray that people will go pick it up and read it and tell other people. This is Jesus. He's talking to us. He wants to make a connection with us. He wants to give us all wonderful love and peace and harmony and a little laughter along the way and just all things good. And we pray that you continue to let people know that, Lord, and put it in their hearts to Feel that and share that with other people We pray for safety for our children At school and everywhere And we pray for safety for everybody Who's crazy out there We know they're there And we pray that you keep us all safe In Jesus name we pray, amen Amen And hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah You know you can never say hallelujah Enough and it's really you're praising God, you know, when you say this, you know, and we can never praise him enough. We can never praise him enough. He didn't leave us alone. He's with us the whole time. He's with us the whole time and he's letting us know that in the book. If you read the book, please do yourself a favor. You know, don't do me a favor. Don't even do Jesus a favor. Do yourself a favor. Because he's still Jesus if you read the book or not. I'm still God's writer if you read the book or not. Can he still do anything whether you read the book or not? But if you want that con- a better connection with Jesus, you will get this book and you will read it and you will see how amazing Jesus is and, and what he's sharing with us. 
and and it will make you feel good. You really will. It's called Jesus, I Am. Look it up on Barnes and Noble and get it. And you know how to spell my last name, obviously, because you've been looking up the show that's been recorded for a while now. And God bless you, and thank you for showing up and tuning in and turning out, and I may have to keep you any longer. So, Jimmy, take it away, and we'll see you next week, live and worldwide again. Bring a friend. Turn your phones on speaker phones if you're at home. Let the whole family hear it. God bless. Peace, love, joy, happiness, all those things. And Jesus, stay connected. Lord, just so, so wonderful, awesome, just so great. Strong and omnipotent. You know everything you omniscient getting. When you start something, you always finish it. From Revelation, starting back to Genesis. You're the record holder, no need for Genesis. Heaven is home, you're thrown to premises. Alpha and Omega never is diminishing. You turn mad, men and a gentleman. You're the prescription, no need for medicine. You're so perfect, great and intelligent. You are the president of co presidents. So many masses inside your residence. Messages from your angels is heaven sent. Jesus Christ is who you blessed us with. And the Holy Spirit is what you left us with. You're magnificent. Lord, you're the best thing ever happened in my life. You are, you are magnificent. Lord, you're the best thing ever happened in my life. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are. You're you you magnificent. Hey, you made the heavens first. The Stars, moon, the whole universe It's for existence to this whole planet Earth It formed man straight up out the dirt Your father gave everything birth The explanation, how much you were worth You live in water, so we'll never thirst Blessed spiritually, although my flesh curse Angelic beings are always at work You invented disciples to create church You know everything, you don't have to research You a healer, doctor, surgeon, nurse You move forward, you don't have to reverse you you don't have to rehearse. God to see me through the pain and hurt. It's your mercy to what we deserve. You're magnificent. Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened in my life. You're magnificent. You are. You are. Man, you're magnificent. Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened in my life. You are. You are. You are. You are. You are. You're magnificent. Made the oceans and trees. Lakes. Ponds, creeks, every water stream Articulate, creative, everything Gave us voices so we can all sing Lord of lords and king of all kings You taught Joseph how to interpret dreams You made silver and gold say ching ching Made every diamond go bling bling Salvation, you gave it to us for free You made the summer, fall, winter, and the spring I'm so proud to be on the winning team J-E-S-U-S-G-O-D You made the grass, flowers, roses, trees, fruit and vegetables and planted out seeds. Perfect in all your ways, yes indeed. This is my letter to thank you for blessing me. You're magnificent. Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened in my life. You're magnificent. You are. You are. Lord, you're magnificent. Lord, you're the best thing that ever happened in my life. You are. You are. You are. You are. You are. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. Everything you did for me is not in vain. I know we live in a crooked and corrupted world. I appreciate you for all things. You are all in all. I just want to tell you, thank you. I love you. You appreciate it. Deep within my heart, I love you. Amen.